Here we go. Yeah, you got it. Did it pop up in your feet? Hi. Nobody's in yet, so. <laughs> Welcome to George and Court University. This is Virtual Self in Society. And I am going to be talking about, I'm going to talk about the basics of Periscope and an assignment that the, our class has completed as part of the requirements of the class. So if anyone has any questions. Hello, Emma, do you do? What? I'm saying hi to the person who just followed. Oh, hi. So if anyone has any questions, please uh, please feel free to ask them. Taylor has been kind enough to hold the, the phone. Uh, Periscope is a relatively new tool, and what I'm going to cover here in the next 20 minutes is what is Periscope, some of the basics of Periscope, and how to use it in college classes, how to use it in higher education. So the very first, the very first thing I want to talk about is what is Periscope. So everyone in classes use Periscope. In your own words, tell me what Periscope is. Can someone like to volunteer? Charlie. A live video broadcast of basically whatever you're doing at that moment. Live video broadcast of anything that you're doing at that moment. Does anyone else have a different definition? That pretty much covers it, right? <laughs> okay, so it's a live streaming video mobile app. You use it on your phone. Is it hard or difficult to use? Very easy, pretty simple. What do you need to have in order to use Periscope? A cell phone. Cell phone. You need a cell phone. What else do you need to have? Cell phone service. Cell phone service. <laughs> Why? We're getting very basic. An open mind. You need to have an open mind. Why do you have to have an open mind? For people commenting and for just broadcasting and what's going on with the other people in to like your surroundings. You learn you about Periscope. Because it's live, you have to be open to your surroundings. Yes, you learn about Periscope. What? Somebody said you learn about Periscope? Question mark. Oh God. <laughs> yes, we do. And we got some hearts. It got hearts. All right, thank you for the hearts. We're learning how to use Periscope and integrate it into digital communication classes. Hi, Firefox Ice. So we have a lot. Of, I'm sorry, what was it? Firefox Ice said hi, so I said hi back. <laughs> thank you, Taylor. So part of the, the really great thing about Periscope, which is unlike traditional broadcast, is the fact that you can interact with the people who are watching. And it is the interaction with the audience that really takes the marketing and branding aspect of Periscope to the next level. So we're talking about it in the context of a college classroom, and the students who are sitting in this classroom are journalism, interested in pursuing careers in journalism, public relations, event planning, special events management, did I miss anything? And business. So how are we using these new tools to create content is really what we're talking about and some of the best ways to use, to use them. So we're here in a lab, in a Mac lab at Georgian Court University, which is in New Jersey, centrally located by 12 miles from the Jersey Shore. And we're talking about Periscope. Periscope is a really new tool. It's a great tool. I think it really is one of the, uh, a, a tool that is going to grow enormously. I was looking at some of the statistics. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks, Taylor. And from week to week, the percentage of users on, on Periscope has grown 30% per week since it was officially launched by Twitter at the end of March. So this tool hasn't really been around that long. March is when it was launched, end of March, really early April. I started using Periscope in July just for fun to play around with it. It is on-the-go broadcasting, video, uh, streaming video and audio. We can join, we can interact. This is a, uh, a screenshot of the Periscope page. If I click on this, it should take us out to the Periscope page itself. What happened, Taylor? Somebody said you smell nice or something. <laughs> the other person said, how do you know how she smells? <laughs> So this is this is the uh, the website for Periscope. So I think I kind of think Periscope is like reality television. Just like reality television programming grew, I think reality reality broadcast is going to grow as well. It really does give us a behind the scenes look of, of what's going on. Uh, so part of the assignment that we had, maybe you guys, the students would like to share and talk about this, is we, I had you initially just go right into Periscope and identify three That's Periscope's cool. 
to look at, to people to follow in Periscope. Remember that we did this? Yes. Yes. What did you learn by just doing that, <laughs> really immersing yourself in the tool? Did you learn anything? How people interact with the audience and how that's like really important. Otherwise, no one wants to stick around. Yeah, people don't want to watch if you're not interacting with them. Uh, last week, there was a Periscope, Periscope Summit. It was the first Periscope Summit that they've ever had. This and is my teacher's Periscope <laughs> user, not mine. What? They asked what your username was. I said, this is yours. <laughs> NJ Gina. That's my, that my, my username is NJ Gina. So this is a little bit different, right? Because Taylor is throwing out questions. Taylor, just look at me so that I know so you're not talking. Well, to they're me. like <laughs> small questions, so I'm answering them oh, myself. Oh, quietly. So like one of the challenges that of live broadcasts where you're interacting with people watching you in the moment. So it is it is a reality. So some of the things that you you learned are how people are using Periscope. I don't know fully that we recognize how the tool is going to be used even a couple of months from now. But for right now, people are getting used to using it, and I think part of being a good communication student, especially a good digital communication content creator, is being really, to, really being willing to go out and take risks and use new t tools and new technology. The rate of the technology is rapidly increasing. I mean, we see new tools every other week, don't we? So we have to have a, a sort of a spirit of inquiry, In really wanting to learn these new tools and to try them. So we learned how it was being used. I've watched a couple of, more than a couple, a lot of pretty bad periscopes. <laughs> I think the better content will eventually shake itself out. There's all kinds of things to be seen on periscope. Hi, Alequisha. Hi. Okay, so let's look at the basics of the broadcasting screen. Taylor, what time is it? I want to make sure I stick to my 20 minutes. 12.26. Okay. So the basics of the, the Periscope broadcasting sh uh, screen, Taylor, can you see that? And mm -hmm. obviously if you're watching through Periscope right now, you know what the screens are, but for those people who watch this uh, via just regular video, not live on Periscope, when you open up and you, down you download the Periscope app and you're getting ready to broadcast, there's a couple of different areas of the screen I'd like for you to pay attention to. Here we have the title. The title of your Periscope, the title of your Periscope is really important, and I liken to this to writing an article, a, uh, a journal, <laughs> a newspaper article, or digital content that you're going to put out on the web. What's the purpose of the title for your Periscope? So you have to do a couple of different things. The title is serving a couple of different functions because this ends up in your Twitter stream. So, Brie, what's one function of the title? You mean like... To like draw people in? Yes, to draw people in. So what kinds of things should we think about when we're writing our, t when we have a title? Well, you want it to be like irrelevant to what you're talking about. So you want your title to be relevant to the content mm -hmm. of your Periscope. So good Periscopes, guess what? <coughs> they have a purpose, don't they? <laughs> Some kind of yes. purpose. Not everybody uses it for that. But generally speaking, I don't, I'm not going to watch a Periscope if I don't know what it's about. There's so many other things that are vying for my attention. If I want to have people watch my Periscope, I need to let them know what they'll be looking We're at in when college. they log in. What, what, Taylor? Was there a question? I was just saying we're in college. We're in college at Georgia Court University. Yeah, right. Um, I'll explain, I'll explain oh, okay. as we go through. So, so we're looking at the screen and we'll turn it off and then we'll turn it back on. So we're looking at the broadcasting scre screen for Periscope. So right now we're talking about the title. Why is the title of your Periscope important? Why is the title of a newspaper article important? Melissa, why is the title important? Um, because it'll draw your audience in and it has to be short and sweet and convey the message properly. Short and sweet, it has to convey the message properly. What do you need to have in your title for Periscope? You should have at least one hashtag. You should have at least one hashtag. Why should you have at least one hashtag? So it can be searchable. So it can be searchable. Familiar. How are hashtags used in Twitter? Amy, how do you use hashtags in Twitter? Um, just whatever you're tweeting about. If you're tweeting about like digital communications, you hashtag that just to link it to so if people are interested in that, then they'll come across that. Right, so the purpose of the hashtag is to aggregate those those tweets, that content into one feed on Twitter. And this allows people to find you that are interested in that particular content. So you at least want one hashtag. 
The other thing that you might want to have is the hashtag catch. Who can tell me what catch is? I'll go over catch. Catch is... Saves your um, video feed as soon as you start streaming. It'll digitally download it. Yes. It archives it permanently. So it allows you to take the video content that you're live streaming and save it. Catch is great because now you can go back, you can re-watch the video, and you can also edit that video. You can scrub it. You can take it down. So early on, I was periscoping not but I didn't know about this function and I lost all that content so we want really strong titles and I'm going to go through this quickly we'll go over this again once the pair this periscope ends this is the viewing screen right here so the middle is what people are seeing you have to make sure these little icons down here I want to point out to you so can you really quick just turn the light <laughs> off and then Taylor go towards the screen so people can see what we're talking about thank you can you see it Okay, so I want to talk about these icons in the middle of the periscope. You have a little bird, which is the Twitter bird. This bird needs to be on so that it can, it will um, let the people on Twitter know. It'll put it right through your Twitter stream. The next one here is the, sh the chat button, the person. If that chat button is not on, it does not allow um, viewers to interact with you that are not following you. So you want to make sure that that allows for interaction for people that are not following you. That's one of the great things about Periscope. The next is we have this uh, right here. This function right there is to make that private. So if I just wanted to send a Periscope out to a few people that I selected, I could click on the Periscope. It would not be live to be seen globally. And then we have the locator, which is right here. The locator lets people know where on the planet I am live video streaming from. So those are some of the very basic functionalities and obviously we have the start broadcast button. When you push that button, you, you start uh, video streaming. The, there, there are a couple of screens in Periscope. One of the screens that's really important is actually your own screen. So when you create your Periscope account, it will bring in your Twitter data, your Twitter information, your picture. It will also show you how many people you're following, who's following you, and then it also provides for that settings page. As I mentioned, the settings are important because if you don't have your setting for auto save your uh, broadcast, it will it'll erase within 24 hours and you will not have access to it. The other really interesting to me and interesting and useful tool, and there's so many ways I think Periscope will be able to be used in the classroom, is the map of where people are periscoping from. So I took a screenshot this morning, and if you look at uh, North America and South America, those are, that's all I can fit on the screen. You can see in this part of the country, we're in the New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania area, we're in New Jersey. You had 14 people periscoping over in California, you had six. And then you can look at different parts uh, around the world of who's periscoping and where they're periscoping from. Now, one of the things uh, over the summer, I took a trip to Italy, and I just thought it would be fun to look on Italy, to look in Italy to see if people were periscoping. And sure enough, they were. They were speaking Italian. People in France, and you could interact uh, with them. They can interact with you. It's kind of an interesting way to explore intercultural communication if that's something that you're interested in. Does anyone in class have any questions or does anyone on the Periscope have any questions so far? No questions. <laughs> All right. The next thing I'd like to talk about is re the replaying your Periscope. Can you turn the lights back on for me? Thank you. Okay. Uh, somebody said, can I turn location?